Okay, so now let's talk about the topic one of the part one exam, which is the um, accounting adjusting entries with the accrual basis. And within this topic, we'll, we will be covering the following uh, specific points. The first one is the accrual revenue versus the accrual expenses. And um, also, we will be talking about the, the differences between the, defer, the deferred revenue and the deferred expenses. And in total, in total, there are one accrual revenue, one deferred revenue, one accrued expenses, one deferred expenses. And students usually get confused with those concepts, and, um, and we will get into the details of those. And we also have other adjusting entries um, other than the revenue and expenses. Uh, for example, the bed debt expenses and the depreciation, and we will also talk about that as well. Okay, so first, let's start with the um, accrual revenue. When we're speaking about the accrual revenue, which is essentially an explanation of the uh, American GAAP principle, which, uh, which stands for the uh, generally accepted accounting principle, and the major differences between the um, revenue and cash is the step one to understand the, the accrual revenue. And, and first, let's talk about the concept of the adjusting entry. And the adjusting entry is basically the journal entry that converts a company accounting record to the accrual basis versus the cash basis. And typically, um, the adjusting entry was made before the company's financial statement cutoff date. And be careful, when we talk about the adjusting entry, it never, never, ever, ever do anything with the cash account. So in a nutshell, let's say the adjusting entry doesn't involve the cash account. It always does not because the adjusting entries are pretty much doing the revenue adjustment or the expenses adjustment on the PNL, on the income statement, and also the corresponding accounts on the balance sheet. So that's the number one uh, we need to be clear before we move on. Okay, so now another thing I want to I want I want to talk about is the timing of the revenue recognition. So speaking of the speaking of the accounting or the bookkeeping revenue recognition, there are two timing points we need to be careful about. The number one is when do we earn revenue and the number two is when the revenue is being recognized. So in the uh, accounting area, the revenue was earned when goods are transferred or the service is rendered and which means that that's the timing for us to book income on the uh, uh, on the software or on the company's book. Uh, there's a huge difference when we compare the cash basis accounting versus the accrued basis accounting because the cash basis is a lot more like a common sense. It's like when you receive cash, you book income. When you spend cash, you book expenses. But speaking of the accrued basis accounting, is that when 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 do you earn the income? You book that income. You don't wait for the cash received. You, you, don't, you don't wait for that. So the cash, when you receive cash has nothing to do uh, when you book the income. So let me repeat, the cash was earned when the goods are transferred or the service is rendered and that's the point for us to, to, uh, uh, to realize the revenue. And after the realization of the revenue, we recognize the revenue. And in the accounting, the revenue recognition simp simply means that you record the amount or the numbers on the book. Okay, so we've talked about the accrual basis accounting versus the cash basis accounting, and we discussed the timing of the uh, revenue recognition, and then now we're moving on to more details, like what is the debit and credit journal entries for booking the accrued revenue? And first, what is accrued revenue? Accrued revenue, if we break it down to separate terms, accrued basically means that um, something happened and something will be accumulated you know, and then the revenue, which is the income. So the accrued revenue together, which means the revenue was earned, but the payment was not received. And if we think 
further of the concept, then the next thing we need to do is to book this amount on the uh, company's PML or the balance sheet. So the accrued revenue, in essence, is by the time of the cutoff date. And we need to take a look at the uh, PNL and the balance sheet to see if we're missing some information which could potentially lead the company's periodic income lower or being higher, which means being undervaluated or being overvaluated. And specifically in this case, the, if the accrued revenue adjustment was not being booked, then the consequences is the company's book income will be undervalued. So the, the journal entry for accrued revenue is is quite frank, which was which very straightforward. Um, the debit side gets involved is the receivable, and we can we can imagine that when the service is being rendered, and then we are entitled to the income, so we must book a accounts receivable on the debit side. And meanwhile, there's a there's a balance between debit and credit, so there's an accounts receivable, which means there are always a revenue on the credit side to have the book being balanced on both sides. And the examples of the accrued revenue could be the commission revenue, the interest revenue, the rental revenue, the royalty revenue, or any kinds of revenue that you're entitled to but not received the payment yet by the end of the accounting cutoff period. Those amount in those entries has to be showing on the book. So. After we take our first look at the accrued revenue, the counterpart side is really what it's about for the accrued expenses. And the accrued expenses carries the same idea, just like the accrued revenue, which means the expense has incurred, but not yet paid. And some of the students might have a hard time to understand this because if the expenses were incurred or, or let's say if the expenses are not being paid, why do we, why do we have to book this on the, on, the, uh, on the company's book? Well, the thing is, remember, this is always about accrued basis accounting, which is a matching principle in between the revenue and expenses. So when we book the revenue, we have to match the expenses with those revenue. And for those of the cash payment expenses, easy. But when we get into the crude expenses, let's use a simple, simple example. Um, let's say the company will be paying the employees like four days from now, and the payment period is, uh, let's say, every, every week. So today, we assume today is the company's cutoff date. And four days later, the company will actually write a check to all the employees. And that which means three days before now, the companies wrote the check to pay the employee before. And, and as we clearly see, there is a payment, there is a payroll payment circle. And then while we're in the middle of two payments, and when this is the time for the financial cutoff, and that's the problem because right now, even though there's no actual cash payment incurred, but the, the employee already worked for us for three days, which, which means that the expense already happened. So we need to book those expenses along with the revenue. So that's what I'm trying to say, um, the, match, the matching principle you know, always kicks out. And now let's talk about the journal entries of the accrued expenses on um, similar since this is the accrued expenses, we're talking about we're talking about the expenses. There's always a debit on the uh, expenses, and also we have to uh, balance the journals between debit and credit. So on the credit side, it definitely has to be a payable. Well, um, this payable is not a real payable if you uh, if you think further, because the payment time is not coming up yet. But it is still a payable. And especially for when you, when you book this accrued expenses today for the cutoff purposes, and from now on till the uh, payment date, 
Um, you need to be very careful about the journal entries you're about to book on the actual payment date because part of that payment was already accrued on the book, which caused a uh, credit on the payable. And what what you actually need to book is the difference. Is the difference, but but. We'll talk about some, some of the techniques that you can avoid that kind of complicated issue. And the common example of the accrued expenses also include the commission expenses, the interest expenses, and rent expenses. You know, 